It's a Conspiracy is a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown and community supported. For a list of other fun programming, please check out the Alberta Podcast Network.com where you can find shows like Crow Reads Podcast. <laughs> It's a conspiracy! Do that, and it's a whole new day! <laughs> yes, it is! Well, season four, episode five, promises, promises. Welcome back, everyone, to It's a Conspiracy. This is the podcast where we lay out the beliefs behind selected conspiracy theories, alternative accounts, legends, myths, and more. I'm your host, Andrew, and I do not claim to be an expert on anything we're going to discuss today. And we'll probably be wrong about everything because it's starting to get a little chilly here, and I'm all into that. This is the best time of year. Just pumpkin spice lattes for everyone. Are you guys on board with pumpkin spice lattes? Hey? Oh, yeah. I don't hate them. You don't hate them? I don't hate them. I do not understand when people are like, oh, any second, like people on social media, like any second, pumpkin spice this and pumpkin spice that. Pumpkin spice lattes are coming. Like, just let people have what they want. Just corporations just go overboard with it, though. That's true. It might be ah. a little overdone. Yeah. But that's just big business for you. you know, I don't need pumpkin spice earphones. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Please don't put those in your mouth after they've been in your ears. <laughs> you guys you guys think it's it's too much? Is it a latte? Hey. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. That's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, um, if, uh, as always, if you'd like to see where we dug up whatever sugary treats we're going to let caramelize on the stove, then please check out the episode description. Charlie dunks those apples with glee, and you can be a part of the revolution by checking out that action right now. You can just look at them, and then look at the links, and then look at him, and then look at the links, and then look at them. And we are, as always, a very proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network. Yay, team. Yay, friends. Yay, network. Ooh. Yay. Uh, you can check us out at itsconspiracypodcast.com. Our Twitter, at Is It a Conspiracy? That's run by the social media influencer, See Irish Madman. Our Facebook group, our Instagram page, It's a Conspiracy Podcast. That's run by Gorgeous Greg. Our email and our Patreon page, patreon.com slash It's a Conspiracy. Boom. Now then. Joining the online distance communication time today is Charming Charlie and Gorgeous Greg. These happy fellers are going to interject as they see fit, and I'm very appreciative of their digital company. We had a second Greg who ended up being another person last time. So there's just one Greg with us this time, which is great. A lot of Gregs. Greg, how many how many times do you find yourself in a room with other Gregs? Rare. Um, in, in Zoom calls, it actually happens way more often than in real life. Gregs yeah. are just naturally... Yeah, Rock, well, I've got it? a couple of doppelgangers here and there that I like to keep in my pocket just in case something happens. Pocket mm-hmm. Gregs, yeah. Yeah, pocket Gregs. Yeah. Right if next there to were... my pocket dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there were other Gregs and one of them happened to have two Gs on the end, would you like... Oh, that's a different, different kind of Greg, man. That's a different kind of Greg. Kate, that's, a different to... class. that's a different class. <laughs> Uh, now, Charlie, with yeah. a yeah, it, if with a with a strong, strong-willed, firm yes or no, can you tell me if you've heard of either of these theories? We're actually going back to two things. It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Number one, the gunpowder plot. No. Number two, Project Blue Beam. No. Okay. Thank you very much. That was very very willed. You sound like a, a stoic parking lot, just full of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, then, subject number one, the gunpowder plot. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgotten. Seventeenth century England, King James, yes, the one involved in the King James Bible. He was the King James of England, and he declared England to be a sovereign Protestant nation. To not be part of the Church of England was actually against the law, and he was the head of the church, and the punishments were severe. This rubbed a lot of Catholics the wrong way as their faith was deliberately pushed underground and ended up affecting their ability to work, vote, 
serve in the military and be friends with who they wanted and marry who they wanted. Just basically every aspect of their life. It was uh, was affected by this this change. Religious oppression is one of those things that really never goes well. And so a small group of men got together to put an end to the Protestant laws and the king at the same time. This group, led by Robert Catsby, included John Christopher Wright, Robert and Thomas Wintour, Thomas Percy, Robert Keyes, Thomas Bates, John Grant, Ambrose Rookwood, Sir Everard Digby, that's an amazing name, Francis Tresham, and most famously, Guy Fox. And this Saturday like the Saturday Night Live band. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it could be a famous ska band. for Musical Canada. guest, <laughs> Kanye. <laughs> now, the plan was simple. They would blow up the Houses of Parliament. That's the Palace of Westminster during the state opening of Parliament when it would be packed full of the king and all of his parliament. Parliamentarians, his government members. Parliament for um, the Yeah. The explosion would be courtesy of 36 barrels of gunpowder placed directly beneath the hall in which everyone would be gathered. Setting things up would require secrecy and planning, but the actual assassination would require just a single man with a match. Guy Fox, a military Englishman who had converted to Catholicism early in his youth, and fought for the Spanish army and went by the nickname Guido. How great is that? <laughs> he, he was a, a explosions expert and he volunteered saying it would be an honor. Over the next several months, the plan be- began to take shape. The barrels of gunpowder were snuck across the River Thames by boat a few at a time. Tunnels beneath the parliament buildings may have been dug. A revolt was planned for the evening of the explosion and a sub plan, a secondary plan was hatched to abduct the king's daughter, Elizabeth, and the date was chosen. So she would be uh, abducted on the evening of the explosion. And finally, the date was chosen after a number of delays. These delays were due to the plague and actually the requirements for social distancing in Parliament. If you guys can just to bring it right back to 2021, oh. they were like, we're going to let the numbers go down and then we're going to socially distance. Because they were dealing with the plague, and that is that's a historical fact. It's all cyclical. The date would go down in infamy as the fifth of November. Now, on the evening of the fourth of November, an anonymous note was delivered to William Parker, thirteenth Baron of Morley, fourth Baron Monteagle, that warned him not to go to the Parliament building the following day because the Parliament would be suffering a major blow. Parker delivered this letter directly to the king, and a huge investigation of the building immediately unfolded. Within hours, Fox was caught in the basement of the building with the gunpowder, all the barrels, all just right there ready to go, and a pack of matches in his pocket. They arrested him on the spot, and he was sent to the Tower of London for questioning. Fox initially denied having worked with anyone, But after three full days of torture, he gave up the names of his conspirators. These men were all rounded up, and with the exception of their leader, Robert Catesby, who was shot uh, shot dead in the process, they were taken alive for the purposes of a good old-fashioned public execution. Hooray! (laughs) Oh, the good old days. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, No TV. Let's go watch someone get their guts pulled out. It's basically pay-per-view. (laughs) Uh, On the day of the execution, the surviving conspirators were dragged through the streets of London to the court outside of the Parliament building. That's the very building that they were planning on destroying. To the amusement of thousands and thousands of cheering fans, um, there, the infamous act of being hanged, drawn, and quartered was performed. This basically means that you are hung by the neck until you're almost dead. Then you're placed on a table or sometimes a ladder if there's a lot of people so that they can see you. And when you're tied up to the ladder or table, they emasculate you. Uh Uh-oh. They disembowel you. And then finally they behead you and cut your body into several pieces to be put on display at prominent locations like the London Bridge, important ports, stuff like that. They brave hurt them. Yeah. (laughs) They send your head to the London Bridge. Woo. Catesby, the original leader of the conspiracy who was shot while being arrested, was actually dug up and exhumed and put through this process as well just to add to the spectacle of the show. So he was already dead, but they dragged him down there, hung him. Dragging him through the mud. (laughs) Cut him up and put body parts all over England just to to give everybody a show. 
<laughs> in a moment of I, it's it sounds i mean he was planning on killing a lot of people uh but in a bit of merciful fate i'm sure at least he appreciated this fox knew what was coming and he managed to slip out of the noose and throw himself from the gallows so he was dragged down there uh, but after he was hung he slipped out or he jumped out and broke his neck and died instantly in the fall so he still got you know demasculated and disemboweled but at least he was dead when that part happened so he did on his own terms yeah yeah the other guys weren't so lucky in the aftermath Parliament declared November 5th a national day of Thanksgiving, and the first celebration of it took place in 1606. Bonfires were ordered to be lit around England, and effigies of fox were given to children to burn up while collecting treats, such as parking cakes, from passers-by. So they sing little songs, they burn up little guy fox dolls, and everybody lights fire. So it ended up becoming very well known as Bonfire Night. In the you are going to say Burning Man. Burning Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the years since, the names of most involved have been forgotten. Uh, but Guy Fox, for a number of reasons, has gone on to near mythical status. Bonfire nights have started up in predominantly Catholic countries, such as France, where effigies in recent years have changed to more modern, controversial figures. And this whole thing seems to represent a celebration of the effort against religious oppression Rather than like, oh, thank thank you, God, for protecting the English monarchy. Like there seems to be they're celebrating. You shouldn't be oppressing people. And we're going to burn this guy in celebration of him. Somehow that works. Perhaps most famously, there was a film in 2005, which a lot of people don't realize was released on the 400th anniversary of the real event called V for Vendetta, which again propelled the idea of Guy Fawkes into the public sphere and reestablished the, char- the popularity of the pointy Guy Fox mask. Mm-hmm. And that mask was adapted by the protesters at the Occupy Wall Street movement. And that mask is also the official character of the hacktivist organization Anonymous, who I'm sure we've all seen by now. Who? Anonymous? Yeah, who are they? <laughs> have you, who are have they? you not seen? Or for real, you don't know who Anonymous is? <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. I'm He's not got sure. got you again. Yeah. He's tricked me again. (laughs) Finally, a law, which is still in effect to this day, declared that the Palace of Westminster be searched from top to bottom, from soup to nuts, for explosives on November 5th every year. So this year will be the 416th time that it has happened. Searching for barrels of gunpowder and somebody looking to blow the whole thing sky high, kill everybody. Well, have they found anything other than that first time? I think it was the one time only. That's a one and done Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, but the one time you don't go looking. No, for sure. That's the time. That's right. right. You yep. get the insurance so that you don't need it because the one time you don't get the insurance, that's when such shit goes down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You listen to your GPS and you drive right into a lake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that's the gunpowder plot and Guy Fox and, yep, good times. So, uh, Greg, what are we... Uh, what are we drinking? Have you got something? Oh, man, I, I don't have oh. it on me right now. But oh. I, saved, I saved a can because it's actually become one of my new favorite beers. Oh. Um, it is a uh, dad beer. Oh. Dad beer. <laughs> Done wow. by uh, Best of Kin. I think they're based out of Calgary again. Um, <clears throat> brewed in memory of our dad. This is the beer he would have kept stocked in his mini fridge to enjoy after a long day's work. A clean drinking, thirst quenching, laggard ale based on a traditional German recipe. And it is. It's really, really good. It's, uh, it's, it's a little skunky, but if you like that kind of beer, get it. It's delicious. I'll take a skunky beer. That's all right. <laughs> I'm just going to share here if I can. If we can enjoy some share time together. Um, I, got, I recently had myself a Lil Crispy from Ale Architect. Light, clean, and crisp. All you find here is malt, hops, yeast, and water, just like the Germans do it. What's in a name? This one goes out to Mason, a co-founder of Ale Architect. On the street, they call him Little Crispy. Little Crispy. So it was good. It was it was really light. I do like a nice uh, light ale. I wouldn't really call this. I guess it's a lager. But I was like, ah, this. If I didn't know, this tastes to me. Like a, like a blonde ale or a Pilsner or a Hefeweizen. I mean, I don't really know the categories. I'm usually like, hey, that's a neat can. I'll buy that. And uh, if you guys take a look at that can, how great is that? Beautiful. Just a beautiful design. I, I yeah. drink that beer for sure. 
Absolutely. Now, yeah. there's it looks like three different designs. Is it just like a random like are there random can designs? Are there rotating can designs or this one the 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 pack that I got again just like the pumpkin pie spice ale, it was a thing at my liquor store where you can buy just a can. Single can. And the can yeah, the single cans which was fantastic. <laughs> uh so than you, single cans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one that I had wasn't actually any of these three, but it was uh, kind of this like shapes with different colors like uh, this is probably the basic version but there's a bunch of different alternative versions of it or alternate versions very handsome can very nice to very nice handsome to look cans. at that was nice my nickname in high school handsome, handsome cans <laughs> there's handsome cans charlie <laughs> <laughs> also wasn't little crispy didn't didn't you release a mixtape under that name a couple of years ago, <laughs> like, I, I, I cannot confirm nor deny that DJ Lil Crispy was my nom de plume at one point. <laughs> oh, me, it's my turn. Well, not all what are we drinkings have to be alcoholic. So this time I'm repping ginger beer, non alcoholic ginger beer from Annex Soda. This isn't some weak, watered down ginger ale, it's a real ginger beer. Packed full of as much lemon and ginger as chemistry allows and sweetened with nothing more than a bit of cane sugar. It's tasty. It's delicious. Annex soda. Nice. I like their products. You like ginger ale, do you? Or ginger beer, sorry. I like ginger beer. They also have a great uh, lemonade, you know. They got some, they got a decent root beer. Check it out. Find it at your grocery store. (laughs) Have you guys ever had a chance to try birch beer? No, birch beer. No, I don't think I have. Ooh. It's, 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 it's like it's like root beer, but like more Canadian. Birchy. Mm. Yeah. You, you can, really like, notice you can the... feel the flannel when you drink it. Does oh. it have a lot of bark in it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Makes you feel like a flannel top and like a thick denim pants on. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, now that for me is is the pumpkin spice of fall is getting to wear a nice, a good, a nice denim and a, and a nice flannel. That's comfort. Get your hat with the flaps on. <laughs> yeah, my flap hat. My flap hat. <laughs> <laughs> your wool knit sweaters. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's going to take us to ad number one. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Bonkink. I'm Andrew Paul. And we're the hosts of the Well Endowed Podcast. The Well Endowed Podcast is produced by Edmonton Community Foundation, or ECF as we call it. ECF provides grants to charities through the endowment funds we create and manage with our donors. Hence the title of our show, The Well Endowed Podcast. Every month, we bring you a collection of stories and interviews with fascinating guests who are working to make Edmonton a strong, vibrant city to live in. Through these stories, we look at the space where endowments intersect with your communities. So if you're interested in the people and issues impacting your community, check out the wellendowedpodcast.com. All right, we are back with subject number two. This is Project Blue Beam. Blue beans? Blue beam. Oh, beam. Beam. Beam with an M. Beam. Blue beam. Blue beans? The 1990s. Quebec. The New World Order. Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Jurassic Park. Floating cities. All of these things thrown together in a plot that is slowly unfolding still today is known as Project Blue Beam. Supporters of this theory claim that NASA, the UN, the Canadian and American governments, all working under the guidance of the Antichrist, are readying to pull off the greatest hoax ever known to mankind. This theory was put forth by a Canadian investigative journalist based in Quebec named Sergei Manast. He released a book titled Project Blue Beam, NASA, in 1994, which described an oncoming religion being planned by major powers in the world via their development of psychotropic weapons. Upon release, a number of readers pointed out that the theory put forth by Sergei Manast is identical to the original plot for Star Trek The Motion Picture. Uh, Gene Roddenberry's original screenplay had featured a group of aliens who introduced themselves to Earth as religious leaders via a satellite-controlled projected simulation. So something was out in space projecting down onto the planet, and behold, I come in peace. This script was rejected by Paramount at the time, and Roddenberry published it as a novel in the early 80s. In his book, Manast declared that films like 2001 Space Odyssey and Charlie's favorite Jurassic Park were not only preparing people for an alien visitation, but were selling the active lies of both the theories of evolution and establishing the technology needed to convince the world of a godlike visitation. Essentially, the theory states that a satellite or number of satellites would be armed 
with state-of-the-art projectors that would produce a very convincing supernatural event that would rally the world into believing the second coming predicted in the New Testament of the Bible was happening. This massive event would finally establish the dominance of the New World Order. Oh, yeah. And give them one currency, one faith, one world ruling ability that they've always been looking to establish. According to Manasse, there would be four steps in Project Blue Beam. Number one, a series of earthquakes would be staged and change public perception of archaeological knowledge. Evidence of alien visitation would be planted and discovered, and a number of religions would be challenged and disproven. Number two, holographic lasers would produce every god popularly acknowledged by populations around the world to appear in the sky simultaneously. These projections would speak in multiple languages and eventually, Voltron style or Power Rangers style, all form together to create one mega god. Number three, the satellites would then send out a series of electromagnetic waves that people would mistake as telepathic messages to prove the authenticity of this claim. So the projections would be like speaking in different languages and people would be like, I hear it in my head. I can, he's in my brain. Number four, last step, Mega God would then declare that an alien invasion is imminent in every major city on earth. Governments would be sent messages on how to defeat the aliens and a massive global nuclear annihilation would unfold. Simultaneously, Mega God will declare that the rapture is happening and that anyone who is not a Christian will perish in the alien attack. After publishing his book, Manast claims to have been harassed by world authorities, mainly sent by NASA and the Antichrist, and claimed that his life was in danger. In 1996, after his children were taken away from him by uh, Quebec Social Services, he was arrested for undisclosed reasons. One night later, after being arrested, he was found dead in his jail cell, and the official cause of death was listed as a heart attack. These suspicious circumstances have led supporters of the theory to believe that he was murdered by the Canadian government in order to silence his theory. Lastly, sky anomaly footage has been showing up more and more on public websites like YouTube that supporters claim are proof of very convincing projections coming from satellites. We'll put these up in the, the links are in the episode description and we'll put some pictures up on the Instagram, but yeah, I'm just going to show those. you guys. What yeah, I've, I've got like? one here. I've got one here to show you. For I example, That's such a here's, good word. here's a clip of a sky anomaly happening that was captured in Norway in December of 2009. Okay. Boom. I'm expecting this to look like the giant head from Rick and Morty. Show me what yes, you got. So yeah. <laughs> I like what you've got. <laughs> disqualified <laughs> oh you got it's a video it's a video this just keeps getting better so oh. you guys see there's the sky anomaly there whoa sky anomaly that's pretty dope that's amazing was it, it is was that burning man <laughs> that's in norway of 2009 now if you thought that was cool you got more i got one more here that's super cool You've already okay. impressed me. Uh, here's a more recent clip of a floating city that was described as coming way up from the atmosphere and slowly descending on the city of Foshan in the Guangdong province of China. I hope I'm saying all of that right. And it's another video. Is that a clip from uh, Avengers Age of Ultron? Yeah. It, does, it does look like a city coming totally down like that, like doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you can see like the buildings here. And they said this started way up high and slowly descended on them there. Amazing. Yeah. Interesting. Technology is cool. Oh. Super neat. In both instances, government experts referred to these incidents as common mirages known as Fata Morgana that happen under specific weather circumstances. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys, I we're not in opinion time, but both of those things were dismissed as... Just some weather. weather weather patterns. This is yeah. some rain. So that there is Project Blue Beam. Blue beans? Oh, and uh, that's going to take us to ad number two. This episode of It's a Conspiracy is brought to you by Park Power, your friendly local utilities provider in Alberta. Offering internet, electricity, and natural gas with low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. Winter is coming, 
and energy usage for Albertans will be increasing. So now is a great time for listeners to look at their utility bills and ensure they are on the best plan. Albertans have a choice who they pay their utility bills to. Park Power is happy to provide free, no obligation comparisons. If you decide to switch providers, it's easy. You can feel good knowing you are supporting a local business and helping to give back to our communities with your utility bills. Learn more at parkpower.ca. We're here in opinion time. All right. So, uh, Charlie, do you remember what our first theory was? Oh, yeah. Guy Fox. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And our second theory, Greg, do you remember what the second theory was? <laughs> wasn't, wasn't paying attention. Project. Project Blue, Blue, Blue Beans. Beans. Project Blue Beans. Oh, Boo Bleams. Yeah. Blue Bleams. Yes. Blue Beans. Yeah. So, uh, Greg, what do you think about uh, Project Blue Beam? Uh interesting mainly because i really like star trek and uh, that whole gods coming from a different distant planet coming to make sure that uh, we're going to be their subservient uh, i'm cool with it i'm ready for it i want it to happen <laughs> i want to see some cool stuff in my lifetime i'm tired of waiting i want some interstellar travel i want some uh some alien contact um you know i want to see rtd2 and c3po in the next 60 years mm. i think i got that long according to andrew i've got even longer yeah well i mean you know 60 years yeah by the time you're 60 years old that'll be 2054 mm. but, that, but that being said i think that's just too big of a secret for like so many people to keep at the same time it would be hard for multiple satellites equipped with state-of-the-art projectors to be all doing this and nobody like leak out the truth right so but do you guys think everyone would fall for that like let's say that they were able to do it and keep it a secret do you think everyone would see that up in the sky and would believe this or that people would be suspicious if something happened like a, a a series of cities just descending on us all all around the world every major city in the world we all get visited by like just this magical alien descending city and everyone's like oh it's the second coming whoa I think that maybe half the people in the world would believe it, and the other half would not believe it. And I have that on good authority because of other things that we have, <laughs> quote unquote, proven in our midst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so half the people would be like, holy shit, floating cities. And the other half would be like, those floating cities don't exist. Uh, I haven't done my due diligence and investigated it enough online. That's right. I have yeah. not looked at <laughs> enough YouTube videos. However, I have, in fact, seen a few YouTube videos, so I believe it. I, I would say if I if I can like the the official governments experts around the world in different countries like supposedly third party non biased they're like yeah that's uh weather weather patterns that's Fata Morgana that's that's a cloud mm -hmm. mirage did either of those things look to you guys like cloud mirages or any kind of strange weather happening that would produce I mean first of all they both looked radically different one was like a spiraling thing that had like portals opening and closing. And one looked like a super cool, like, District 9 city yeah. spaceship. Mm. Like, did either of those look like just weird? Just weather. Just weather. Just weather. <laughs> weather, that, weather. That, I would say the spiraling one probably could be, you know, posed off as, like, just perfect lighting and a whatever kind of weather pattern. Real But, like, just crazy. to see it, like, an, an actual floating city. Yeah. It's a little different. It is, isn't it? It, it seems like a bit of a weak, like, ah, it's a, it's a weather balloon. You know, like it, it sounds like the old alien thing, right? So it's just a close up of my Lego buildings. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm not entirely sure I believe this theory. And uh, as much as I like the kind of idea of like a Voltron mega god forming in the sky, I like that sounds fantastic. And it'd be, you know, real neat to see. But the dismissal of it due to weather patterns, I'm like, yeah, that is yeah, like, that's come classic, up with... right? Anytime, any, anytime any weird stuff like that happens, that's the, mm -hmm. that's the go-to. No, 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 weather balloon. No, no, no. It's just uh, a reflection cloud. off of some swamp gas. And, yes, uh, that's a good one. And in, in, in Texas. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, as for uh, the Canadian connection, I think it's great. Anytime I can find like a, like a Canadian conspiracy, I'm, I'm all over it. But uh, the fact that the guy was dead of a heart attack the night after he was arrested. You know what that makes me think? He was Epstein. It's a conspiracy. Oh. <laughs> that does, whenever that happens, I mean, whether or not there's there's facts there, it, it really does add so much weight to whatever theory the person was putting forward. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it just... How mysterious. It is super mysterious. And it's just, just kind of a, a final chapter. Yep. Yeah. And he might have actually died of a heart attack. 
<laughs> it's the that's the phenomenon song. Yeah. You'd think you'd go with the LL Cool J song. You'd think you'd think would be your Are you kidding oh, me? Man. Do you What's know bro? Do you like even know me? <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, you're all over LL Cool J until we start recording. We've talked about this before. I, I don't understand. I have no problems with LL Cool J. <laughs> Ladies love Cool J. Hell yeah. Uh, and what do you guys think about the gunpowder plot? I, I guess Charlie, do you have any thoughts? Would have been it? if they hadn't have caught him, if they had, if if that leak hadn't have leaked. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't have a well, shitty movie to watch. That'd be for sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like the the movie wouldn't be there, but also like like the king would have been assassinated and that building like not only would that building have blown up but it would have taken out like the entire neighborhood yeah uh it would have been the single biggest act of of terrorism in british history uh i mean it would have been a game changer would have been like game of thrones Mm -hmm. yeah don't you blew up the the septum totally andrew has no idea what we're talking about no i don't but (laughs) i guess badass yeah okay andrew radical moment to be fair it would be like in um in breaking bad where they blew up gus fring Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now Greg doesn't know what that is. I do, because I saw that scene. Oh, I tried to turn the tables on you, but you <laughs> caught the clips. But yeah, so Spoilers, by the way. We'll talk about this later. I guess the thing with, <laughs> with Greg, did you ever celebrate? Uh, it's it's more of a East Coast Canada thing. Bonfire Night in the Maritimes is a, is a bigger event than in Alberta. 100%. Yeah, so uh, it's a lot more of a French tradition than anything, but I've never mm-hmm. heard it being associated with like uh, the 5th of November or anything like that. Right. But it is celebrated on the 5th of November, right? Yeah. But I've yeah. never heard like the direct correlation of like the, what happened in the gunpowder conspiracy and, and bonfire night. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting part of it that's kind of left behind. So like I said, the bonfire night has been kind of repurposed in another, a number of other countries. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, I, I would imagine in Atlantic Canada that it's the French kind of brought it over and they were like we're gonna leave all the english stuff that we don't like about this and celebrate all the cool stuff like pretty much yeah having it's fires a great, it's and a great boots. time mm-hmm. so putin rapé you know some some elephant ears beaver tails that sounds good do people wear the masks um i don't recall no i don't think that was a really a big thing until um um v for vendetta came back out. till the film yeah. To the film known as v for vendetta i i kind of want to say about that uh movie is that I like the movie a lot, but I know the source material, um, it was radically changed. So that's another one of these Alan Moore graphic novels. It's a really good graphic novel. The movie takes a lot of that out of it and changes a lot of things. But I think the movie is still really good. And I do kind of like how that mask ended up being a real part of popular culture for a while. Like Occupy Wall Street and now Anonymous. That is cool. Like it's an iconic image. Would have been somebody else. Okay, so like they say one of the things aside from obviously finding all the gunpowder was that he happened to have a book of matches in his pocket. Now that's not really the most damning because like I'm sure lots of people carried around books of matches at that time if they were smokers. In the 16s though, like how how, uh, common would like a book of matches be? What would what would they had? Would they had lighters, Bix, some flint and a rock? I think I think the fact that he was the only one down there with any matches is kind of like the evidence more so than was he a smoker? Could, Come on, maybe he just couldn't find the pipe. light switch. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, actually, and once again to to harken back to Mary Queen of Scots, King James was uh, Mary's little boy Hmm. so she had a very short rule and then king james became the king i think it like he was just a baby and uh interesting guy so maybe we'll come back and talk about him a little bit but it's all connected um, yeah translating the bible for example he also wrote a number of books on witchcraft and demonology and kind of accidentally started up that whole witch hunt thing that took over in the mostly in the united states pretty popular for quite a long time yeah all right then mirage friends we sure do appreciate you swinging by to hang out with us again And we will be back with episode six very, very, very soon. In the meantime, if you're needing a warm weighted blanket to cuddle up in your feels, then go snoop on our past cast and social media stuff at itsaconspiracypodcast.com. And uh, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. See you never. It's a conspiracy. (laughs) 